The tripping sequence tool is used to test the reclosing sequence of a controller. Additionally, the simulation of up and downstream reclosers allows sequence coordination functions to be tested. The tool offers two modes for testing. Select the sectionalizer mode if you are testing a sectionalizer control. In this mode, the software will simulate an upstream recloser in order to test the counting increment of the open sequence to lock out of a sectionalizer control. If you want to test a recloser control, select the second option, which allows the reclosing sequence to be tested. In this mode, the open interval timing can be measured and assessed. In the following page, the load state can be defined. Enter the duration of the pre-fault state. A load angle can also be defined if the recloser control supports voltage inputs. The load current is automatically taken from the setting in the hardware configuration. Next, the fault state can be defined. If you want to output voltages during the fault state, enter the voltage as a percentage of the nominal voltage. Then, specify the fault current. On the right-hand side, select the type of fault you want to apply. If you are testing a three-phase recloser with single-phase tripping functionality, select the trip and lockout behavior as set in the controller. On the following page, the reclosing test mode is selected. Arco Control offers three different test modes for testing recloser controls. Select Full Sequence to Lockout if you want to test the complete lockout sequence of the controller. Alternatively, you can select Successful Reclose to test the successful reclose after a certain number of cycles. The last option allows the sequence coordination function to be tested with a downstream recloser. If you are testing the full sequence to lock out, define the number of shots to lock out according to the settings in the controller. For the trip sequence test, timeout values must be defined in order to abort the test sequence if the signals that are expected do not occur within defined parameters. Enter the maximum dead time, which has to be a larger duration than the longest expected open interval time of the controller. A maximum trip time has to be defined, which needs to be longer than the expected trip time for the defined fault current. If Verify Open Interval is enabled, the open intervals of the reclosing sequence can be assessed. Additionally, the timing page is added to your test procedure. Enter the duration of the open intervals parameterized in the recloser control and add a tolerance. Now let's start the test. The current state of the recloser is visualized in the animated picture on the left. After applying the pre-fault for the defined time, the fault is applied, which is indicated by the fault symbol. The software will now go through the fault and open sequence until the device finally locks out in an open position. Notice that the screen will be framed in red, indicating that the test is running and outputs are active. To stop the test after the controller locks out, simply click the Lockout Verified button or wait for the maximum dead time timer to expire. The results of the test are displayed in the right half of the screen. You can see the trip time for the defined current output and the actual open interval time. If any of the previously defined timeout parameters are exceeded, a pop-up error will appear. Since a message has not popped up, the measured open interval times are within the defined tolerance. The successful reclose test mode is configured similarly. Enter the number of cycles after which a successful reclose will be simulated by outputting the nominal load state instead of another fault. The other settings are the same as they are in the full sequence to lockout test. The third test mode is used to test the sequence coordination feature of a recloser control. A downstream recloser is simulated by the software. 
Enter the shot after which the simulated recloser fails to trip together with its trip and open interval times in the table. Now start the test and watch the simulated behavior states of the downstream recloser. The recloser control under test should sense the downstream operations of the recloser on the simulated fault and take those recloser operations into account. If in this example the recloser control under test is set to four shots to lockout, it would sense the two reclosings of the downstream recloser and only reclose one time before locking out. For testing sectionalizer controls, use the sectionalizer application mode. This test setup is similar to the recloser mode, but in this mode, an upstream recloser is simulated. On the next two pages, define the pre-fault and the fault state that are specified as in the recloser mode. In the sequence screen, use the expected trip after shot field to define the cycle during which the sectionalizer is expected to trip. For example, if set to 2, tripping of the sectionalizer is expected during the dead time of the second cycle of the simulated upstream recloser. The trip and dead times of this simulator recloser are defined in the table below. Now proceed to the test screen and activate the outputs. Now you can analyze the trip time and add the results to your test report.